Uh, thank you very much, um, Professor Ray Francis, for your very generous and kind words. And uh, I too add uh, to your sentiments of acknowledgement to Aboriginal people. Uh, whilst this is a formal occasion, it's an intimate setting, and so I think a few comments from me will probably suffice. But I do want to firstly recognise the standing that attaches to an honorary degree for universities uh, and place on record my sincere thanks to the ANU and its University Council for bestowing on me what I appreciate is a very real honour in the truest sense of the word and for taking the time uh, to come out today uh, for this ceremony. Uh, I want to pay tribute to my wife Doris who's here today. I think because It's one thing to be given uh, recognition for that that you do and that is important to you. But I think it's always the case that the person who provides the opportunity for you to do that is not acknowledged. Suffice to say, she's provided unstinting support to me over many, many years and what has been sometimes an all too busy life. I think as well, uh, I want to place uh, on record my appreciation for the many people that I've worked with over the years, some of whom are here today. Uh, in particular, I do want to acknowledge my fellow agents of change, uh, as the press release says in Midnight Oil, Bones Hillman, Rob Hurst, Jim Magini and Martin Rotsey. So much of the oil's output over many decades reflects their combined songwriting talents. And they've never wavered really in supporting whatever campaign or project uh, I was agitating for us to take uh, a role in, uh, nor even shy about suggesting a few of their own on occasion. The fact is that when you receive an award of this magnitude, you do ask yourself the question, do I really deserve it? Um, it's wonderful to hear the things that uh, have been said about you, but none of it is ever done um, by yourself. Uh, in my case, obviously, emotional moment to recognise Doris's role in our marriage of many years. Impossible without that. But also in each and, and every setting, impossible without the people that you do work with. And I've often said, and I know it comes as a surprise to people, but I've never been a believer in this sort of Western mythology of the hero. You know, I don't really don't think, I mean, I think it was mythology, to be honest. Um, most of us get good stuff done working with other people, and I'm certainly no exception to that. I should say that I was far from an assiduous student, uh, in particular when it came to legal studies. In fact, when I first came here, we were swept up in um, sort of the backwash of the 60s, rolled into ANU in the 70s. And it was a heady time. It was the time of the counterculture. And yes, whilst it certainly had some wrinkles and some undesirable consequences, uh, it was also a time when students agitated for change and were very involved in big and important national and international campaigns, uh, such as ending uh, the war in Vietnam and uh, ending the state of apartheid in South Africa. And I think that time, more than anything else, led me to believe that anything was possible if you got involved. That it wasn't simply enough to think about it or talk about it, you actually had to go out uh, and join in with others and do something about it as well. And for me, that was uh, a lesson that I learned early in life and it's one that I hope has stayed with me since that time. Of course, I was already experiencing the tug of music and performing uh, that would ultimately become my main career. If I'd had a set of pipes like that, I might have gone a bit quicker, I should say. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> um, albeit a career that uh, many of my contemporaries believe to be an exercise in wishful thinking and futility. Little did any of us know, really. Uh, notwithstanding all of that, again, notwithstanding uh, my disinterest, the thing that I reflected on and I want to acknowledge, particularly to teaching staff, including senior professorial teaching staff here, is that my lecturers' persistent efforts despite my absences and negligent approach to study, were sufficient to ensure the imprint of some knowledge 
of a specialised kind which never faded away. And indeed, those lessons uh, initially saved uh, my colleagues in Midnight Oil our livelihood um, in a business where managers and promoters did wear what looked like shark skin shoes, and they certainly acted the part. During my term at the ACF, when legal issues were always bubbling, and we were always considering at the time uh, how best to either encourage or prevent governments from doing things which we didn't think were in the interests of the environment. And then once in government, uh, and especially in relation to approvals under the Environment Protection, Biodiversity and Conservation Act, uh, as it turned out, uh, I was a highly activist minister. And all of those decisions taken under that act, and many of them challenged, and all of them bar one small one taken by an Australian public service bureaucrat still standing. And then, of course, as was mentioned uh, in the citation, instituting with Foreign Minister Stephen Smith Australia's International Court of Justice action against Japan uh, around scientific whaling. So that learning that I first acquired here and later at the University of New South Wales when I completed my legal studies was in fact invaluable to me, uh, especially at a time when um, contemplating the International Court of Justice action, it was very clear that the Attorney General's Department here, a senior and eminent uh, legal advisers and the Department of Foreign Affairs as well were not only opposed, but additionally didn't think that the prospects of victory were anything like certain. On the question of genuine reconciliation with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, yes, it has been an important issue for me, as I know it is for uh, all of us in our current generations. And the law recently, I think, has played at least a generally constructive role. Unfortunately, it's really base politics which is holding us back at this point. In relation to the environment and the super issue of, of climate change, I expect the law to evolve rapidly. In fact, it's already been pushed in that direction, not only in respect of challenges to government planning, decisions, and you will have seen only a couple of days ago a decision uh, in the court in New South Wales, I think a hallmark decision by um, Justice Brian Preston about the fact that a development was not approved because it wouldn't be consistent with our obligations under the Paris Agreements. But I think it will extend as well in areas of negligence and liability. And in fact, I go further and say that eventually we will have national and international tribunals constituted not dissimilar to the International Criminal Court. Uh, and there'll be no prizes for guessing who we want to put in the docks. And the Chancellor and others here may have a view about uh, the possibility of standing, but my own strong feeling, and it was my reason for entering Parliament in the first place, is that the civilian population will no longer countenance the negligence of politicians and powerful interest groups who refuse to take this issue seriously. When I came into the parliament, I felt that climate change was an existential threat to this country uh, and to the greater world community, and that we needed decisive action. Not only to reduce greenhouse pollution, because some of it, as you will very well know, is already in the system, but also to start climate proofing our physical and our industrial and social infrastructure, wherever we could. And the great tragedy that we're faced with, friends and colleagues, is that since that time, our capacity to do that job has diminished, but the threat has greatly increased. Uh, but my conviction remains that we must act. And I think lawyers and lawmakers and policy makers not only need to respond to the reality of a warming world veering off course, but they better get ready for their day in court. Finally, quickly, universities like this one um, provide and have a very critical role. They provide the inputs in, in educating young minds. They're expanding and developing and, and deepening uh, curricula. They're extending research. And, and particularly here in, in Canberra, but uh, in our other cities and, and regions as well, they occupy a very central place in the local architecture uh, of community. And there's a history over many, many, many years, maybe not quite as long as the Doffing history, but certainly a history of the, of the role that universities' students um, and academics and teachers can and sometimes do play when 
nations or communities have got to navigate times of crisis, difficult political and social uh, moments. And I think that ANU can and should play that role. I'm aware of the outstanding scholarship and advocacy of a number of ANU personnel on this issue. Uh, I'm aware of the goals that the university has set itself around sustainability and the like, and I applaud those efforts. But I would say that we need boldness and we need to move quickly, uh, lest the hell of this past summer become the new normal in a future where both horizontal and vertical impacts are going to cascade across our natural landscapes and into the lives of billions of people. Uh, for me, that's an important thing to have said to you here today because I know that uh, this is a room with people who have the ability uh, to make a difference and to influence things. This morning, as, um, as Ray was saying, we um, particip oh, I participated in the launch of the Canberra Precinct, a fantastic what the, what the uni has done there, and talked a little bit about the creative endeavour. And I guess I want to close with just a personal reflection about uh, the way that my mind tries to deal with the things in front of me, because I am a creative person at heart. Uh, I love the business of performing. And uh, when the Chancellor turned around and said, did I, you know, come and sort of joked at me to come up and, and join, you didn't realise how close I was, Gareth, to coming across and, <laughs> and taking up the choruses. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's always been a bit of a wrestle for me between uh, the left hand and the right hand side of the brain, you know, between the, the analytical, legal process side and, uh, and the creative, wild, you know, slightly sort of, you know, ragged side. Uh, sometimes they complement one another. Uh, sometimes uh, they contest the space. And it's been underway in my head for as long as I can remember, and it shows no signs of um, settling down. So I have to get used to it. But whichever is prevailing at the time, one of the things I, I have always tried to see is where the possibilities for action to make change lie. It's not enough to be able to make the declaratory statement about the need for change. Um, we, ha we have an expression in our family that that's a, a sotbo, a statement of the bleeding obvious. You know, you, you, it's the next step. Where do the possibilities for action to make the change lie? And then, when that's identified, what can you do in concert with others um, to make that change happen? That's the goal, uh, or the task, uh, to try and do your bit uh, with the tools that you have at hand to shape the world for the better, Understanding that no matter what the circumstances or how dire uh, things might seem or difficult, every single little bit actually helps. Uh, there are people in this room who've done that, I know, and, and there are many others uh, outside this room, right around the country and around our planet, likewise, who toil and who go unrecognised. And I'm more than aware that a publicly visible life is no more or less significant than any other life. Uh, and so, consequently, I'm acutely mindful that there's much more for me to do as well. So the honour that has been bestowed on me today, um, I truly do appreciate, and I'm grateful for it. Uh, but hopefully it's going to strengthen my resolve and increase my determination to continue on with the task uh, that I've set for myself with the many others that I've worked with in the past. Thank you very much.